Montreal instead of uh, yeah, PBR. So, uh, like Don said, my name is Maurizio Barbieri. I'm the head of sport for Samsung. And you might ask, uh, what do you guys do in sport? Not so much for, uh, for the time being, but uh, we have awesome ideas. Uh, just to be clear and assess what kind of a very tough crowd I have, who has read uh, Ready Player One? What? <laughs> Three people? Are you serious? Who has watched The Matrix? Still, not all the hands, come on. What? <laughs> all right, no, no problem. So, um, we are quick. When, when you associate, if you have to associate VR and sport, what, what, what does come in mind? Don't be shy. I'm, you know, I have a mustache, but I don't bite. Unless I'm asked. So, what's the deal? Virtual reality football stadiums. Imagine watching an English Premier League match in the virtual reality environment, virtual yeah. reality stadium. It's boring in real life, why should I watch it in VR? But, but uh, you do get... Uh, so it's the, not the train ticket, the train ticket in London or to Manchester. Unless, uh, unless the rights are with the organizers that will make you pay 150 bucks. It's cheaper than paying $1,000 in SIE. Fair enough. Uh, you can use it for training. I don't know. Right. Yeah. 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 That's it? Training? Yeah. Yeah. That's what came to mind first. Okay, uh, anyone else uh, wants to add? Uh, How about to play football with your favorite level stars next to you or with you as a team? Ooh. That's good. That's actually good. Okay, so uh, it's, it's all fair. I think that uh, all this is going to happen one way or another, uh, sooner or later. I think that uh, sport and VR are the perfect combination because it's uh, something that is live and it's something that we want to be in their shoes. Who doesn't want to be uh, the greatest uh, cricketer? Right. Unless, <laughs> unless you are not Indian. But, uh, okay. Or uh, who doesn't want to be Messi or uh, Cristiano Ronaldo on the pitch at least, not when he goes out. But, uh, this is, this is something that is going to happen, right? This is something that brings you into the action, and you can actually be the action, right? So imagine, imagine a situation in which you are, you are sparing a thousand bucks to go and at the Emirates Stadium and uh, watching uh, Arsenal getting defeated, <laughs> but uh, that happens quite often, don't laugh. So, um, so instead of going there, uh, you are actually watching it uh, with your friends at home. Uh, and if they are unruly, because you don't like them anymore, because they are supporting the other team, you kick them out. They cannot even trash the place, right? Because it's, it's a place. Um, think about uh, education. Actually, NFL teams, NBA teams, NHL teams, uh, they are already using this technology to prepare all the personnel to the different situations on, uh, on the field, or on the rink, or on the court. That's how you want to be. That's the best way to, to say, this is where I need to be if I have to release the shot and uh, score. And you, you can actually have uh, the immediate feedback, right? Uh, because if you move properly, the ball is going to go in, in. Um, so this is uh, something that uh, is going to affect the full uh, production chain of, uh, of, of the sport industry. Sport industry is around $100 billion per year. So it's, it's you know, substantial kind of money that, uh, that goes around. So it's uh, something for uh, the clubs to protect their assets to improve player performances, to make sure that, that they don't get injured, um, but also for uh, brands uh, to be part of something that might be left out. So let's say that you are uh, not the official beer brand uh, for the Champions League. What prevents you to create your own virtual stadium and advertise against content that uh, it would be more expensive or uh, it, you, you don't have the rights for that, right? Uh, at the same time, you can invite other people to, to, to watch that. And uh, also for uh, 
the users. So how do I experience a game? Do I watch it from uh, the pitch? Do I watch it uh, as a 2D, but with friends uh, in this uh, virtual environment? Uh, it depends. It depends on how you set it up. It depends on what kind of experience you want to have. There are companies, uh, and some of them, some, their representatives are here, so please go and talk to them. I'll point them out. One, two, three, and four. Uh, they, they, they are actually recreating uh, the event uh, by using the data that is being captured during the game. So the players are moving, are running, are jumping, are going left and right, they are shooting. All that data is already available, right? So what you do when you watch a game on TV, you actually watch the telecast, that's the video feed. But what prevents to recreate that event in, uh, in another way, by using other data points? And uh, who owns that? How can you use that? How can you distribute that? How can you monetize that? This is a fascinating uh, part of, uh, of the industry. If I can uh, give a suggestion, if you have bright ideas and you want to put them into VR, try to see what's, uh, what can be done uh, in sport, because it's the fastest growing industry when it comes to this kind of things. Even though it's kind of uh, risk averse, uh, at least you are going to have fun watching lots of sport. Uh, who doesn't like sport? That guy. <laughs> Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. It's going to be, as a, knowing what we are going to do five years from now, how we are going to experience a football game or a rugby match or a cricket uh, ODI is going to be totally different because we are going to be there. You can be, you can be watching something from the perspective of the stumps or you can be the ball or you can be the car. Or the player. And you can be the player, yes. Or you can watch the game while the players are, uh, are around you. This is, uh, this is a choice. So my colleagues are like, yeah, but uh, going to the stadium is great. Uh, you have a different experience. Uh, you know, that it's outdoors, whatever. Uh, it's going to be a choice. My, my opinion is it's going to end up whether I have the tickets, whether I have the chance to go there, probably I will still go there. But if I don't, and I want to invite all these probably 110 people in one single place without having to leave our real homes and show up all together and somewhere else and share whatever needs to be shared. In this case, the passion of sport, this is uh, going to be extremely powerful and uh, valuable. I'm, I'm sorry if I go back to the money part, but uh, you know it's the nature of the business. We are all uh, building something not only to be accepted, uh, but also because we want to you know, pay the bills. So that's uh, pretty much my view on uh, how sport uh, and VR can, can go together, how sport will be actually affected by this kind of technology. And um, if you have questions, if you have comments, uh, if you have uh, anything that you want to yeah. ask, yes. ask let's, away. Let's take some questions from the audience. Sir, I, I was going to ask that uh, the cost of linear rights are increasing uh, year over year in, in multiple countries. Do you think that VR will potentially bring that down, or would it, would it actually increase? Like, how, do you, how do you see the role of VR and the economics? Uh, this is a very good question because uh, I don't think that many people have asked themselves how they can manage this thing because the technology is, uh, is so new. It's true, the cost of the broadcast rights, the regular broadcast rights are going up, uh, especially for top priority, uh, top, uh, top properties. Everything, uh, everything that is not top is actually going down, it doesn't get sold. VR be many things depending on how you saturate or how you corral this movement. It can be an additional set of rights. So the rights owners will, set the, will sell the broadcast rights to the broadcasters and the VR rights to 
whomever might be interested in monetizing this bar. They might even decide to go direct to consumer. They might create their own apps or their own offer and say, if you want to watch this on Fox, go to Fox. If you want to watch this with Google's on your face, so that goblets on your face, that's, uh, that's uh, where you have to do it. And you pay directly, it's paid directly to me. But most importantly, is trying to find the right time to frame all these rights. If somebody comes up and manages to get something out of the gate before the regulators are able to you know, put the brakes on that, that's going to be quite, uh, quite interesting. Could be actually a battle. Like uh, broadcast rights are X, but I can make this lifelike and uh, it costs a 10 or 100. Any other questions? Well, given that in this economy, a lot of revenue monetization models have to run through advertisements, how do you think, what do you think of, how do you think, what role do you think advertisements will play in virtual reality monetization? So the question, if you can't hear at the back, is what role will, what will the role be of adver advertisements in VR, correct? Yes. It's going to be huge. Because you need to log in. Let's say the, the, the most common way to access some content is to give up some of your information, right? Uh, on YouTube, you log in. On Facebook, you log in. On Twitter, you don't. Uh, but still, uh, you get a cookie on your browser, or on, whether it's web or mobile, right? Uh, so they know exactly what you, are, what you have done, what you are doing, and probably what you are going to do. So all of us... We are watching the same stuff on StarHub, and we are getting only one brand at a time, right? It's always the same sponsor. It's always the same uh, signage around the, around the pitch. But if you're watching the same content that he's watching, you might get two different brands based on your history, based on what you have chosen to do the day before or two hours before. They know that uh, you bought something, uh, maybe you will get something else. Entirely, it's, it's going to be huge. This is one of the biggest uh, components, uh, one, of, one of the biggest uh, revenue streams that you're opening because it's a one-to-one -one direct uh, communication with, uh, with the consumer. What, that doesn't prevent uh, a big brand, of course, to buy everything, okay? That, that's, that's a given. But they have to pay a premium. We have time for one more question. But there is a Right. So, well, we released, uh, we have our own uh, uh, store, right, for, uh, for our own uh, devices. At the moment, uh, it's uh, mostly highly adrenalinic kind of videos, uh, you know, surfing, snowboarding, jumping off cliff, uh, roller, roller coasting, uh, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and it's working very well. Our 4D experience, we are, we are going to set up in Rio for the Olympics, we are going to set up some areas where you will be able to experience this kind of content in 4D, so earbuds, uh, sight, uh, chairs moving, and so on and so forth. I think that in the future, there will be two components. I, I'm, I'm speculating, of course, because uh, you know, I, I can't speak for what I'm doing, but the big picture, I think that two components. One is the B2B side, meaning our technology provided to somebody that will build on top of that, and uh, for the consumer side, uh, trying to find partners that will uh, use our technology to tell sport-based <coughs> stories in a different way. So again, you can be the player. You can be Djokovic uh, before he gets uh, onto the court uh, before the final uh, at, in Melbourne for uh, oh, Australian Come again, sorry? You can play against you can, you can yes. Your skill against him. Well, you're gonna lose. <laughs> 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 you're gonna lose bad. 
because it's Djokovic. But it's VR. You should have seen it VR. Yeah, that's, that's PlayStation. Anyways, that's, that's good. That's good. Thank well, you very much. We all thank uh, Maurizio. Yeah, thank you very much.